I'd like to address the coaches out there um, and facilitators. But even if you're not a coach or facilitator, but simply you want to create more content, this video might be useful to you. But the reason why I'm, I'm focusing on coaches and facilitators is because oftentimes I hear from such professions, you know, George, uh, I am not a teacher. Uh, I am not a consultant. What I do is facilitate the experience of the client finding their own answers because the best pathway or, um, you know, insights for the client comes out of their own insights and their own mining of their, of their soul. And I respect that. I understand that. And I agree to a large extent that oftentimes when it comes, especially when it comes to personal issues, um, the best answers are the ones that uh, come from our own intuition or the mining of our own experiences. However, <laughs> Uh, as a coach or facilitator, imagine if you had a bigger audience, if you had more people following you on social media, for example, well, you would have more choice in terms of which clients you can take on that you'd like to take on rather than always be struggling with getting enough word of mouth and getting enough referrals to have a client base that's sustainable for you, for your business. I would like to help you get to a larger true fan audience so that you could have the choice among what clients you want to take on. And you could also have the choice to do a group coaching program if you wanted to do that. So anyway, in the rest of this video, I'm going to give you some ideas that as a coach or facilitator, uh, it would help you to create content. So first of all, let's just even assume that all you do in your client work is to ask powerful questions. That's a common, uh, common, idea, common technique that coaches have is to ask powerful questions. So, well, George, how can I create content just by asking clients powerful questions? Well, let's talk about this. Why do you believe those questions are powerful? Take one of the questions that you ask your clients, really bring that to mind right now. What is one of the questions you ask your clients? Okay. Now, what is the context behind that question? Why is that question meaningful? Of all the questions you could ask your clients in the world, why that one? And you may even tell a story about why, of, uh, um, of, you know, of course, keep, always keep your clients anonymous in your content and try to change any details that no client would say, wait, that's me, you know? So try to change things. But, but you could tell a story about uh, a client was, feeling this way or you know, having this challenge, having this block. And this particular question liberated them or cleared the block because that question made them reflect on this thing and then it made them realize this thing and then da, 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 da. And that story itself can be so powerful for a couple of reasons. One, it helps people who are also similarly stuck reflect on that question and how it might help them. And so just reading your blog post or watching your video can have a profound, can make a profound difference for someone. That ripple effect you have on that one person ends up having a positive ripple effect on the people in their lives and so uh, so far and so forth. Your ripple effect from content is much bigger than just getting a single like or whatever. Oftentimes you don't even realize people are getting benefit from your content, even if they don't give you a like. They're being impacted. Well, of course, they're being impacted by reading it or watching it or listening to it. Okay, so it has a ripple effect on them. It also has a ripple effect on your business because now the person reading it says, well, oh, gosh, I'd like to have that kind of experience with this, with this coach as well. I wonder what kind of questions they might ask me. I wonder what is the um, change that might happen within me to be listened to so powerfully to be listened to so deeply and to be engaged with so meaningfully. So that example, right? Uh, but, but so sharing actual stories of the kinds of questions, you know, do one question at a time, one story per blog post or per video is enough. Right? You probably, so in other words, as you work with your clients, 
every single experience you have with your clients is a potential piece of content as you, again, change the story enough so the client doesn't recognize themselves and then tell that story, the principles from that story that made a difference. Okay. So already, hopefully I've already given you a bunch of ideas as you, the next time you meet with clients, that session itself could become a piece of powerful content. Okay. But let's even step back a little bit more and be more philosophical here and say, why is that question powerful? Why is it transformational for someone to ask themselves that question? And why don't people ask that question of themselves on a regular basis? These are all, que these are all questions or topics you can explore in the content. And also that question came out of some philosophical framework right? I mean, you as a coach, you may have been trained on a methodology for asking questions. Well, why, why is that methodology useful? Okay. Go back to your training or just to your own experience and say, why is this method process that I use with clients meaningful? Okay. And um, let's be honest. Okay. Sometimes when you're working with clients and you notice that they are feeling very stuck and maybe you even try to get them to find answers within themselves and they're still stuck, right? Well, what do you do? Do you just, of course, as a coach, you might just keep trying to get them to come up with their own response and their own, their own right pathway. But let's be honest here. You have, you have so much life experience and perhaps client experience that you genuinely believe that, a, that certain pathways are healthier than other pathways, right? I mean, there are certain pathways you see in clients that tend to be self-destructive or harmful maybe to others. And there are certain pathways that are life-giving and uh, helpful for their social relations and for their relationship to themselves and their goals, et cetera. You, you have a perspective on things. You have an opinion on things. Let's not pretend that you have no opinions and you don't think some things are right and some things are wrong. Of course you, of course you do. So that is content right there. What do you think is less helpful for your ideal clients as a pathway? And what do you think is more helpful for your ideal clients as a pathway or principles that are helpful versus, um, uh, beliefs and ways of thinking that are that are more self-destructive or harmful to others. You have an opinion. Let's not pretend that I mean, as a human being, you go through this world and you you make choices and you support clients and you notice, you know, you you help clients become better, become more empowered. Da, da, da. All of that requires a perspective of right and wrong. And any opinion about right and wrong is a solid content idea. You can create blog post after video, after podcast episode to talk about why you think a certain pathway is more helpful for the people you work with, the types of clients that you love working with. Why are certain, why is a certain pathway or a certain principle life-giving to them, helpful for them? Talk about that. And any example you can bring up from your client work is, is, is helpful for this. And, okay, so, so now that we have the, the pathways that we're talking about, the principles that are helpful versus, um, you know, sorry, when I say pathways, I mean behavior patterns, uh, principles to follow, um, sort of uh, um, exercises to do, like they all form a particular pathway. In other words, a framework, a strategy for life, you might say a strategy for relationships or for health or for uh, business or for work or for spiritual growth, a strategy, okay? You have a certain belief about certain strategies being more effective than others. Okay, so speaking of effective versus not effective, you have probably also noticed there is general advice out there that you disagree with versus uh, things that you genuinely believe is more helpful. So. There, you know, your clients might come to you with certain beliefs, certain assumptions about what they 
how they should go through life, solve a problem, have a relationship, whatever. Okay. They come to you with certain assumptions that because, well, the assumptions, the, those assumptions have not been helpful for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be working with you. Their life would be perfect if their assumptions were were also perfect, okay, perfectly right for them. Well, it's not. That's why they came to you. Well, can you uh, can you notice those assumptions? Can you notice them? Okay, what are the misassumptions? What are the less helpful assumptions? Okay, if you can notice them and call them out in your content, you again ha have possibly just changed lives through your blog post, video, et cetera, because people are gonna watch your video or read your blog post and go, wow, I have that same misassumption, or I know somebody who has that misassumption and I can refer them to you, okay? It, it, it shows that you are an insightful and observant person. And that's what clients, potential clients want to see that, oh, wow, if I work with the person, I will gain insights and ability to observe myself that I previously haven't had. Okay. So again, we're just noticing this is the, the point of this video is to know is to notice your clients as deeply as possible and then speak to those noticings in your content. If you can do that, you will open up insight upon insight within yourself and your readers or viewers, and they will say, gosh, I need to spend time with you because I will also open up with insights like this too. So notice the assumptions, notice the blocks, notice the problems they have, and what caused those problems, again, probably misassumptions or ineffective strategies in their life or um, behavior patterns basically that are, are, are hurting them or hurting others. Okay, notice that and then create content about that. There, that I've just given you enough homework for <laughs> perhaps the rest of your life. You just keep noticing, keep noticing what are the assumptions? What are the problems? What are the thought patterns they have? What are the behavior patterns they have? that are not as helpful as it could be. Otherwise, they wouldn't be working with you. Okay, all right. Also notice the next time you are in a session with your clients, notice the words that come out of your mouth. Really, you may want to record yourself and notice the words that come out of your mouth. Sometimes, yes, they are questions. Sometimes they are validations of your client. But sometimes they are perspectives, shifts that you hope your clients will make in their thinking or in their behavior. Have you considered this? You tell the client. Hmm, let me tell you a story. You tell the client. Okay, whatever it may be. Notice the words, even including the questions that come out of your mouth. <laughs> Everything that comes out of your mouth in a client session you can actually look at it as a potential piece of content because you every every sentence that comes out of your mouth has a context under not, underneath that sentence. Why do you believe that sentence is true? Why did you even say that sentence to your client? Of all the sentences you could say, you said that one. Why? What's the context of the client issue? Uh, what is the philosophy you have that made that sentence meaningful? All, all of this is potential content. And all of this demonstrates to your audience that you are an insightful person and gets your audience more interested in spending time with you. Okay. Um, another idea that I want to give you is, and, and this one is a, is a bit more challenging, but some of you may be able to implement this. Record your conversation with a client. Especially, okay, especially a client who is more open to having their examples shared with your audience. So you may notice that some clients are very private and some clients are, are less private. Maybe some of your clients even make social media postings and, and are, are a public person. For those types of clients, you may want to ask them, I have a, I have a favor to ask, you know, may I record our conversation partly for my own study 
of myself, but partly to um, as a potential case study for others to see. Now, we can fully, this I will of course fully get your permission before I share anything publicly or with anybody else. But may I record it in case there are snippets of this conversation that would be a, uh, a power, an, an empowering example uh, that I could share with my audience. Again, I will share with you the snippet before you decide whether or not it's okay to share it. But, you know, having that permission to record, you may have certain segments you're like, oh my gosh, that one, that, the, that three minute moment was so powerful. That, that 10 minute segment of the conversation could really make a difference for, for people who are also going through this particular issue or whatever it may be. So really, look at your clients and see who might be open to it. You, you might be surprised at uh, who might be open to it. In fact, you may, any client that you feel comfortable maybe asking about this, um, you, you should consider this. And uh, last, lastly, I'll, I'll just say this. Um, you are a coach or facilitator because other people find you inspiring or you find yourself inspiring perhaps but certainly your clients find you inspiring other people you know you wouldn't have gotten into the field unless perhaps you got some some feedback from people that oh hey you should become a coach or you should become a facilitator of this or that because uh, you seem to be good at it or you, you're an inspirational influence in people's lives you're above average uh influential uh or inspirational uh, for, for people. That's why you chose the profession of personal transformation. And the fact that you have that effect on people around you means that you could have this effect, this inspirational effect on many, many more people. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people around the world could be positively impacted by your energy signature if only you allowed yourself to make that kind of impact. And I am pleading with you. Um, the world needs help. The world needs more of us who are inspirational to the people around us, who have a positive, make a positive difference in the people around us, who have an energy signature that creates a positive, uplifting ripple effect in the world. The world needs us to show ourselves more in social media, in just on the internet. Because, well, as you and I both know, there are plenty of negative influences on the internet and on social media. There is this idea of a newosphere, which is like the, the thought environment of planet Earth. The, the thought and belief environment and the emotional environment of planet Earth is always at battle between uplifting, positive, <clears throat> helpful, caring, service-oriented side of humanity and of spirit, I believe, and the negative side of, you know, um, anger and frustration, expressing anger and expressing frustration and expressing uh, conflict and um, belittling others and uh, speaking ill of others and speaking ill of the world, that, that, will, that will always be popular because that's just the way that we've evolved. We humans have evolved to notice danger and to notice um, risk more than we notice what's good and calming and uplifting and nice. We just remember the danger and the risk and the bad more. That's just our human brains work like that because we had to evolve to notice risk much more sharply so that we don't die, so that we can pass on our DNA. So this is why we, we those of us who are of a service orientation, of a loving heart, we must show up if we want to continually counter the ever more popular negativity that is on social media and on the internet. So this is my call to action for you to show up more on social media with your heart, with your in insight and perspective and all the things that we talked about in this video 
And there's my dog, sorry, my dog agreeing with this. Let me see if I can make my dog more sharp in the video. <laughs> anyway, you see my dog, very cute. That's Buddy. I was at point in the right direction because Zoom uh, mirrors my video. There, he, there it is. Hi, right, buddy, buddy, buddy. Okay. Um, <laughs> animals are also uh, an uplifting influence a lot of times. So please, please show yourself because the world, the newosphere, the thought environment of this earth needs you and your positive environment. And all the stuff we talked about in this video, create it, create it. And, and before you create it, um, set the intention that this piece of content, may it create a positive ripple effect among more and more and more people. And set that intention, hold, hold expectations lightly, knowing that no matter what, it's certainly creating a ripple effect, a positive ripple effect within yourself. And after you post that piece of content, you may in fact want to immediately share the link to your content with a couple of clients that you think might find it helpful because, well, that's the start of a ripple effect. You manually send it to a couple of your clients, that link to that YouTube video or that blog post or that Facebook post or whatever, Instagram post, you send it to a couple of your clients and then they might support the post and help to create even more of a positive ripple effect. But no matter what, you have positively changed yourself by practicing more insight observation, insight sharing, and a service part. So I hope this is helpful. And thank you so much for being here and for joining me on this journey.